the Tesla program is a very interesting program because the Tesla vehicle being a sports vehicle, it's, uh, it's very constrained in terms of the space that's available. The battery pack it uses is uh, under the floor, which actually raises the floor of the vehicle quite high. But because it's a sports vehicle, the roof line is very low and the seat is packaged, has to be packaged in this space. And so we're um, burnt from both ends, really. So with Model S, it's quite a unique architecture without an internal combustion engine in the front and a big petrol tank in the rear. Um, in essence, our interior architecture lends itself to a lot of imagination. And what Futurists could actually bring to the table with this totally new architecture concept were different ways to actually expand on the available space uh, without uh, having the interior feel like it was dissimilar to uh, an everyday uh, premium luxury sedan. So our group is an applied optimization group. So we look for uh, industry that can lead us on projects that are of value to them. And then we can use our strategies and our capability in applied optimization to, to give them a capability that, that they wouldn't otherwise have. So the design of the height adjust system, which Martin, Martin Seam was involved in, it was a, a key. But the modularity of the seat was important as well. Because it's a, a start-up company with a relatively low volume production, a company like Tesla wouldn't want to spend a lot of money on tooling. But they also want the ability and the flexibility to have seats that can be made to do different things. They power height adjust or manual height adjust seats that go backwards and forwards or tilt. They want um, passengers in the rear to be able to put their feet safely and comfortably under the seat so that it feels like a larger car. So we were constrained in a way that uh, automotive seating architectures are usually not constrained. So it's a very, very highly constrained problem that's actually a very difficult one to solve. So what we were actually looking for in both a design and technology point of view was to work with a company not too dissimilar to our own. Our uh, attention to detail was quite specific. Obviously the world's first ground up electric vehicle required a fair amount of attention and Futurist really provided that as a similar mindset. The front seat structure that Martin's been working on is very good at what it does. It's very lean, it's uh, very efficient, very low mass. Benchmarking is one of the lowest mass seats that does that performs those functions there is. Uh, from a volume point of view, uh, it's going to be quite significant uh, in our own terms, uh, delivering up to 5,000 units by the end of this year of 2012 and a full calendar year of production closer to 20,000 units. Because it's so efficient and so low cost, we can actually sell it in China. So we, we specifically designed two structures to be low cost and sold in China, but actually it may end up being that the one that we designed for the mature market is the one that becomes most popular. I think it's simplicity is, is a beautiful thing, actually. Well, to have a concept or an idea come to fruition and actually be able to sit in a seat that you had a hand in manufacturing is pretty awesome in today's day and age. I suppose with, with the technology advancement that we've seen in the last 10 and 15 years, the thought process that long ago to have anything make it into actual production that the world could enjoy uh, was pretty few and far between. But that accessibility on a global scale uh, for uh, any budding um, design or engineering student uh, is a reality now. The relationship between RMIT and Futurist is of exceptional value to the academics and to the students. It helps the academics to be at the cutting edge of the technologies that we apply and it helps us to be the best practicing engineers that we can be. The seat design required a fair amount of collaboration and of course new ideas mixed with um, manufacturing processes that could bring that to market and I'm sure that uh, that, that RMIT influence had a big impact.